Okay, we uh, take a step step closer. Uh, it's getting getting close to game time now. The guys can feel it. Um, practice has gone great. Um, we're looking forward to it with a lot of excitement, and hopefully we can play a good football game and uh, light up the 12s and make this a, a, one of those kinds of nights at CenturyLink that we love. So that's uh, everybody's intent, and the work has been right on it. So we're looking forward to a good day. Good night. You mentioned last night, last week, that your team was 2-2 two two in December, going to the Super Bowl in 2013. Is the idea of momentum being a little more great than this one? Just how match that face? Find out. You know, we'll find out, see what happens. Um, it, but I don't think that month means everything. You know, I don't think that. I mean, you know, there's obviously been a lot of teams that have done different stuff in going in and, and then and then turn on uh, you know a real good show and get going in the playoffs. So we'll see what happens. Luke has about a 65 percent clip on, on catching passes for first downs. How much did you guys miss him the time he was down? Luke well, it's like any of our guys that you know they don't play. You always miss that guy, but the other guys step in and do do the job for them. You know, did you guys notice Mike walking by right there? Yeah, he, he, won't let you, he just won't let you know he was still out here. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Luke is a really good football player for us, a guy that we've really counted on. So whenever one of those guys aren't here, uh, we miss him to, you know, because of the uniqueness and the special stuff that they bring. What's the Tony McDaniel situation? He's got a concussion that uh, did not that did not respond. He didn't make it back. Was that, did he suffer that in the game? Sunday? Yes. He won't play seven. He won't. He's out. What interested you in uh, Devin Hester and what made him right for you? Well, the fact that Tyler wasn't back there was, was obvious, and, and uh, he's been a great you know, fixture for us. And we wanted to have, uh, if we could, you know, a guy that, could, uh, that you have to respect and you got to take care of. And, and uh, so this guy is like, as good as you can find, and he happened to be out there. So uh, his numbers are ridiculous, and his history is, is extraordinary. And, and uh, he was ready to go, so we, we jumped on it. Why didn't you offer him a scholarship? Somehow, somehow he got lost in the shuffle somewhere. somewhere uh, he's never let me forget that, that we didn't offer him. So uh, I told him he's on scholarship now. So he's finally got it done. Is that the oldest scholarship? <laughs> That's the old, it's the oldest guy we've ever scholared, yes. <laughs> His reputation, do you think, you know, the other teams are like, wow, I mean, We'll, we'll see. We're gonna, they got to kick it to them. When they kick it to them, uh, we'll see what, what happens. You know, we're, this is uh, another part of our team. You know that we, we're counting on. Uh, we want them to do a really good job, taking care of the football, and making great choices back there. And everybody that we had here that was going to go did not have a lot of background and a lot of experience. So we felt like it was really important to get the experience uh, and the decision making. Uh, the guy that's been there and played in weather and all that kind of stuff his, his whole career. So um, I think we're very fortunate to get him. And what have you seen from him? He's done fine. He just jumped right out and uh, he was battling yesterday at practice. Uh, he looked fast and quick and confident and, and all of that. Uh, so he, he did everything he could. How is he doing? Oh man! When you know, when you're in the middle of it, uh, and we were playing them over all of those years, it's an enormous factor. You know, there was all kinds of adjustments that you make. Uh, now, right now, coming in, he hasn't been playing for a few weeks now. You know, I don't know how they'll treat him, but um, back when we were game planning for him, you had to have all kinds of thought about uh, how you want to keep him from impacting the game. The last four years in Boston, run the ball so well, uh, and that's really been a How come you're not down in L.A.? What's that? How you not in L.A.? I thought I was in the playoffs. You've run the ball so well the last four years. Are there positive signs, reasons for a coach that you can sort of we that. Um, the, the positive comes from uh, our, our outlook. You know, we're counting on running the football. We're going to keep doing it. And uh, we had a good spurt uh, oh, a few weeks back. You know, we went four or five weeks in a row. We were running it pretty well. And, and when Russ finally got back to his legs, it made a difference and, and uh, got us going again. So we're counting on it. We're not uh, thinking anything about that. Does Devin take over both the return spots for you? Is that good? Yeah. I'll give you that one. Talked about him this week, but this time of the season, how much do you count on that culture? Well, we're, how much? I don't know how much. We're counting on it. Um, our guys have been through a lot, you know, and uh, to be in the playoffs, you know, this year is exactly where we plan to go again. And uh, so, as it comes, the guys are receiving it, you know, with really high hopes and expectations. But, but. Um, a, a comfort in that they know what's what's out there. For the young guys and the newer guys that have not had that experience, we've really tried to make sure that they mix with the guys that do and watch and listen and, and uh, take note of, of kind of how we go about it so that they can join in on it because we do feel confident at this time of year that we can go out and play good football and, and uh, we're counting on that. What do you do? 
What have you learned about Thomas Rawls this year when things you know, haven't always gone before? Well, yeah, you know, how hard could it be? He had a, a really nasty injury. He comes back two weeks into the season and breaks his leg in a different place, different situation. It wasn't the same injury at all. And he had to, you know, uh, endure all of that again coming back. So, I mean, it couldn't have been uh, more disruptive for him. You know, he had high hopes. He had made a great recovery to get back. And then here he goes again. So uh, his resilience has, has been there. Uh, he's ready to go. Uh, he's been ready for, I don't know, four or five weeks when you could really see that uh, he could turn it around and, and, and really count on his legs and count on his quicks and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we haven't got him the ball cons as consistently as we would like, but and, and any runner needs to get the football um, to, to start to get a feel for it. And I hope, like I said last week, I want him to get the ball 20 times this week. We'll see what happens. You know, that, that, we'll see how the game goes. Um, but he's been great about it. He's been on point. He's, he's been tremendous in rehab and through the process. Um, just to make it back uh, physically is one, but mentally he's made it back as well, and so we're really proud of him. Pete at the hotel tomorrow night. Do you do any bigger presentation speech before the playoffs for the guys, or is it just like another game? <laughs> well, have you seen my notes or something? You already knew, huh? It's going to be. I'm letting it out. We we have a way that we do our stuff, and uh, it's really important as we do during the week and in all indicators, all signs that we we stay the course. We know what we're doing. We know how we want to go about it. Uh, I want to keep the guys in in that. Uh, in that mentality uh, as we go through this thing. So uh, it won't, I'm hoping, as you're saying, I'm thinking I got to do a great job anyway, you know, and so uh, I got to come up with some good stuff again or whatever we do. And, um, but we're not changing in approach or philosophy or any of that. Uh, we, we've been building towards this all of this time so that right now we can continue to do what we know how to do. Is it a replicate what you did in Minneapolis last year? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't know. You never know. Yeah, you know, if you look at the numbers over the course of the season, we're a little better than, than maybe we thought um, comparing to our standards over the last four or five years. Um, we're working hard at it. Last week was a really good indication. Guys were really tight and connected and all of that. We need to continue to do that. that what we're trying to find is that consistency so that we can really count on it. I, I'm, I'm, this the second half of last, two weeks ago, and then this last week, our guys were really fitted together well. And I'm hoping we can continue to show that. Have you seen Gary Gilliam play differently or, you know, since he came back? I think he's, it's taken him a couple weeks to be more comfortable. I think, I think he's already shown that. Yeah, I think he's back. Is there a certain stat or anything you guys look at that tends to carry more weight in the postseason or tends to correlate with success more in the postseason? Oh, it's always the football. I mean, that's always first, and uh, that, that's, that's not going away. You know, it's taking care of the ball. Turnover ratio is always the deciding factor as we look at it. That's number one. Um, there, there's some other numbers, you know. Uh, I think I heard Tom mention the number about uh, completions and, and rushes. You know, that number, that 50 number, has always been pretty key uh, to, to winning football games. Of course, the, the next level of it maybe goes down to third downs. So those are huge, you know, and they usually dictate, uh, you know, how you move the football. Uh, but really, it, it's it's really it's all about the ball. That's where it begins and ends. So it's just the first wild card game at home since Beast Quake. Seismologists have already set up stuff at the stadium to see if the fans have. Yeah, um, and so much of an impact can they have in these sort of situations for you guys? Shoot, I don't know. 12s have been phenomenal. Uh, if that's what you're talking about, the, I don't know about the seismologist, I don't know what impact they can have. But the uh, the 12s can, you know, and they're they're incredible. And, and I know that they're they're cranked to turn it out. They, I'm sure they're feeling it just like we are. I know all over the state there's all kinds of things going on and people are having fun with it. Uh, we need every bit of it. I hope we play uh, to really, you know, arouse them and get them all jacked up. Was that 50 number or something you've you come up with, or was that out That's number? an old number, really. It goes all the way back, as far as I know, it goes all the way back to Vince Lombardi. That's that's when I f first heard about it. And it still worked? I, I mean, wasn't there the at the time. Was I'm just trying to Well, that's like 50 years ago. I mean, the game thing, but it's still a valid number. Yeah. To what extent do you care about Richard Sherman and media relations? Um, well, he... he, he He's got a mind of his own, and he's got um, a real thought about it. And he's, um, whenever you know, trying to protect the integrity of what you say, and as as you get represented, and that's an important thing. And I know Richard's tuned into that, and uh, so he, he's he's uh, very bright, and um, I support Richard always. I have supported him for a long time, and I continue to. I think he's a brilliant kid, and and uh, doesn't mean that you guys are always going to see eye to eye on stuff. Anything else? Thank you.